recent drone attacks. On the 30th of May, the 460th day of the Russian-Ukraine war, about 30 drones entered 460 kilometers inside the Russian border and reached the capital, Moscow. All of these drones were sizable and measured more than four meters, which the residents of Moscow could see. The drones entered the Russian capital in broad daylight and were recorded by Russian citizens. The videos spread like wildfire on the popular Russian social media website Telegram. Some videos were also seen on Twitter. The target and objectives of these drones remain unclear, but at least one collided with the top of a 25-story residential building. Fortunately, the building did not sustain much damage and no causality was reported. Another drone could only damage the few cars parked in the parking lot. The other drones fell somewhere on the city's outskirts and no significant damage was reported anywhere. Total number of drones. The number of exactly how many drones entered Russian airspace remains debatable. While independent experts believe it to be around 30, the Russian defense minister claimed only eight drones entered Russian territory, five of which were taken down by the Russian Panzer air defense system. According to the Russian minister, the remaining three were neutralized by an electronic defense system. For some bloggers and independent journalists, the number of drones was around 2530. However, the debate regarding the number of drones is futile because even if one drone enters Russian airspace, it is a huge deal. You see, these drones were not seen somewhere in the outskirts of border regions, but rather in the Russian capital, something that is worrisome for the Muscovites. These drones jammed the defense system and reached the capital. Although they missed the target, they will likely not the next time. More importantly, some drones were taken down when they were headed toward the Russian president's residence, mind you. We are not talking about the Kremlin, but the private residence of Putin. A large number of Russian oligarchs also live in the region. Since the number of drones was high, the news made headlines. But it is not the first time that Ukrainian drones have entered Russian airspace. Earlier in May, two drones were intercepted near the Russian Senate, located inside the Kremlin. The strategy. According to Russian intelligence, the drones intended to kill Russian President Vladimir Putin, which could have effectively ended the war. However, Ukrainian authorities have not claimed responsibility for that and instead cited it as a false flag operation to provide Russia a reason to go after Ukraine's civil population even more fiercely. Statements like these are not new to the war. It is part of the strategy to keep the world confused while carrying on with objectives. Almost all the independent experts believe that the drones were indeed fired from Ukraine and they have even discussed the objectives of such an operation. You see, despite the support from the Western countries, Ukraine still lacks the technology to completely jam the Russian air defense system and conduct air attacks inside Russian territory. It is partly because neither Ukraine nor its allies completely understand the capabilities of the Russian air defense system. By sending such a high number of drones into Russian airspace, Ukraine was essentially testing the capabilities of the Russian air defense system. In doing so, it may have exposed Russia's biggest weakness. You see, most of the drones were intercepted and neutralized when they reached far inside the Russian border. It means the defense system lacks the capabilities to intercept the unidentified flying object instantly, which opens up an opportunity for the Ukrainian military. Countries that do not have the capacity and capability to jam the hostile country's air defense or other defense systems typically use the number strategy. It involves sending a high number of attackers because the defense system can only intercept and neutralize so many targets. Something like this is not new to modern warfare. The same strategy is employed by Palestinian rebels against Israel. Not to mention, Iran also has a similar strategy against United States aircraft carriers. Iran has a special marine force that operates in small boats loaded with explosives. The strategy is to attack with as many boats as possible in times of war because aircraft carriers can neutralize them. Even if one or two of these boats reach and strike the target, they can damage the aircraft significantly. Now coming back to the Ukrainian drone attacks, it is still unclear what was their exact purpose. 
While some believe the target was indeed the Russian president, others think they were intended to give a taste of war to the Mosawites. You see, since the start of the war, only Ukrainian residents have faced the brunt of it. Russian citizens might know that their country is at war, but have not yet experienced it. Ukrainian residents, on the other hand, have gotten used to extremely loud sirens that go off multiple times in a day. These sirens inform the citizens about potential attacks so they can take shelter at safe sites. Thousands of air attacks by the Russian Air Force have completely wiped off Ukrainian cities. So while the Ukrainians are living their worst nightmare, the Russian population remains largely alien to these experiences. But these recent attacks might have changed this. Following the drone attacks, sirens in the Russian capital also went off, forcing the citizens to take shelter. Undoubtedly, something like this takes a toll on mental health and makes the citizens concerned for their life. One of the objectives of instilling such fear in the opposing country's citizens is to spark mass protests and pressure the government to stop the war. In the case of the Ukrainian-Russian conflict, this strategy can yield excellent results since most citizens are against the conflict. It is important to mention that both countries share the same culture, religions, and even languages in some parts. It is exactly why, when Putin invaded Ukraine, protests erupted in major cities, but the Russian government clamped down and put them to an end. However, this time the protest will be at a much bigger scale if everything goes as planned, according to experts. Concerning their lives, many more people are expected to hit the streets and demand an end to the war. The summer spring offense. The 30 drones crossing into Russian territory are part of a bigger plan, which the experts call the Ukrainian spring summer offense. Again, it is not being discussed in the Ukrainian or international media, but rather something still under the carpet and being worked on. Defense analysts believe there are only two ways to stop the war at this stage. One that involves neutralizing Russian President Vladimir Putin, which in all fairness seems highly unlikely. And second, to instill fear in the Russian citizens to compel them to start a revolution or a mass scale protest against the government. Something so big that the government cannot clamp down with all of its apparatus. The Ukrainian military is expected to go after both the objectives. If either of these operations meet success, the misery of the Ukrainians can finally end. As to whether the Ukrainian military has the capacity to do something like this remains unclear. However, it is important to mention that the present Ukrainian military is far more equipped and trained than the one that weathered the initial Russian attacks. The Ukrainian military is being trained by the US forces and supplied with state of the art equipment. And the recent attack on Russian soil is an indicator of its readiness and preparedness to take the war behind the enemy lines. Whether it will achieve success is a question subject to time. But if it is able to complete the said targets, the war might be over and Russia might also change forever. Negative consequences. However, it is important to mention that this can also be counterproductive. Seeing fellow citizens killed because of an enemy's attack can spark anger in the opposing country. Something we have not seen yet in the conflict. People may start to back the Russian government and pressure them to go after Ukraine with full force. You see, Russian propaganda can work like magic. And especially when people are already angry, propaganda easily finds its way into people's hearts. Be mindful that Russia has not used its full force until now in the conflict. So it is quite possible that when Ukraine begins striking inside Russian territory, Putin will go after them with full force. Something that can wreak havoc on Ukrainian citizens and the military. That's it for this video. In the comments section, let us know what you think of the Ukrainian summer offense. Stay connected with the channel for updates on the conflict and don't forget to like the video. As always, we will see you at the next one.